And we'll turn with me this morning. We're going to go to the book of Galatians this morning. Galatians. Galatians. Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. I'm helping you out there, right? Page 1092. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 7. 6, 7. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Amen? Amen. It says, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. All right. A couple things. When the Bible says man and this, what does it mean? Man and woman, right? It means mankind. Amen? <clears throat> so, uh, women, you can't read that and say, ha, 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 ha. It's the man God's talking to, amen, because no, he's talking to the women also, all right? And it says what a, what, what a man does, what a man, what is it, what's the word he use? Sow. sow. What does it mean to sow? What do you do? It means what you do, right? Sowing means what you do. In a literal sense, sowing was when you planted seeds, right? A farmer, when he sows, he plants seeds. Every action that you do is, 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 is considered sowing because you are planting seeds in someone else's life. Amen? So my question is, what are you sowing? Are you sowing good seed? Are you sowing bad seed? Are you sowing love? Are you sowing hate? Are you sowing worship? Are you sowing anxiety? Are you sowing God's goodness and favor? Or are you sowing deceit and, and anger? What are you sowing this morning? The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You see, we have this innate ability to, to take what we're doing and spin it. And then when we spin it, all of a sudden, we think we're glorifying the Lord or we think what we're doing is not against the word or we think we're justified in the actions that we're taking based upon the actions of someone else. This is kind of a news flash for you. However somebody else treats you does not give you an excuse to treat them in any other way than what the Bible says. Amen. No matter what anybody else says about you, it gives you no excuse to say anything about anybody else other than what the Bible says. We get so caught up in our emotion and in, and in defense and self-righteous indignation that we fall out of favor and grace. We fall back into carnality. And once you fall into carnality, you fall out of the spirit falling out. You understand what I'm saying? It starts a vicious cycle that only leads to anxiety, fear, depression, loneliness, and you grow an old all by yourself. Amen. Amen? Boy, we're starting off tough right away. Amen. Amen. Because listen, it's time, it is time, it is time we grew up and we started acting Amen. like the Christians God called you to be. Amen. Amen. Amen? Playing church time's done. We're not playing no more. Playtime's over. It's time to grow up. It's time to get mature in the Word. And it's time to practice what the Word says. Amen. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. All right. <clears throat> if you've been reaping a crop that you're not comfortable with, that you're not really enjoying, maybe we really ought to look back and see what we were sowing. Amen. Not even one amen? Amen. amen. Man, got quiet real quick, didn't it? Was, right? It gets quiet, just move on. No, we don't, when it gets quiet, we're going to dig a little deeper. Amen. <laughs> we're just going to lance open that wound and get after it. Because the only way that we get better is how? First, by admitting we got a challenge and a problem, and by somebody being willing to say, listen, you got a problem. You know, a real friend doesn't always tell you what you want to hear. A real friend sometimes tells you the thing you don't want to hear. Amen. 
And you, and you know, as, as, as a pastor, a lot of times, you, you know, we have to watch what we say in all honesty because we don't want to, we, we, there are times when I cannot tell somebody what a knucklehead they are. You understand what I'm saying? Because it'll blow them out of the water. They're not ready to hear that yet. And so you have to baby them and nurture them along a little bit to get them. So I'm telling you, church, we need to quit being knuckleheads. Okay? And stop being, the Bible called us stiff-necked. Hard-hearted and stiff-necked. And we need to stop that and start getting before the Father. Listen, you don't need to come talk to me if you'll spend more time talking to Jesus. Amen? Amen. But let me let you in on a little secret. I'm going to call you a knucklehead, but he's going to spank you a lot harder than I will. Amen? Because he just wants you to be better. If you could ever grasp the concept that he just wants you to be better, whatever a man sows, that he's going to reap. So what are you reaping? Listen, if you're reaping discourse, anger, anxiety, and fear, what are you sowing? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> and if you're living in peace, if you're living in, 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 in prosperity, if you're living in, uh, you understand, then what are you sowing? Peace, joy, love. You, you know, Mike and I were talking this morning and, and he come over and he said, Pastor, I, I like coming over to your house and being around you because you have such a spirit of calm. Well, you know what? I should not be the exception. It should be the rule. Amen. If you love the Lord, you should have a spirit of calm. If God is number one in your life, you should have a spirit of calm. If you're at peace with him, trusting and loving him, you should have a spirit of calm. Because you should know that you know that you know God is going to take care of you. Amen. That it's going to be okay. See, if you sow, now listen, if you sow praise, worship, love, peace, <laughs> you receive praise, worship, love, peace. Amen? Amen? Isn't it funny how that works? It's really not rocket science. We try to make things so complicated. We try to make it so difficult to understand when it's really pretty simple. Act the way you want to be treated. Nobody likes to be used, abused, yelled, cursed, cussed at, made fun of. You know what I'm saying? Except Wayne, he likes it. (laughs) He's not even here today to defend himself. Amen. So we're going to make sure he doesn't get a copy of this one. Right? But see, We need to treat people the way that we want to be treated, regardless of the way people are treating us. Amen. Amen. See, my Bible says, be not deceived. (laughs) What does it mean to be deceived? It means lied to. It means that you're lying about yourself. Most of us, we see the deception in everybody but ourselves. You know, I, I say this, we judge others by their actions in ourselves by our intentions amen and i'm not sure where i heard that from i didn't make it up i ain't that smart amen (laughs) but we judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions well how about giving somebody else the same benefit of the doubt you give yourself amen and how about let's learn let's learn to quit being deceived about who we are about what we are and how we act Let's open ourselves up to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, and let's move forward. How many of you would like to be better off tomorrow than you are today? Amen. Amen. You, you know, God has so much more in store for you than you expect for yourself. Amen. We live so far below our potential in Christ th- that it, it, it is at time humbling. God has so much more that he wants to give you. So much more that he wants to bless you with. So much more. So much more peace. So You understand what I'm saying? But see, listen, you got to position yourself in order to receive. Amen. Amen? Amen? All right. Am I being too hard on you this morning? Okay. It says, listen, 
For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows, what does it mean to sow to the flesh? What does that mean? That means speaking your mind, right? When somebody, you know what? I'm telling you, <laughs> they just needed somebody to put them in their place. And I was just the man to do it. No, that's not what that says. Right? That's not what that says. That's not what that says. Let's, re let's read it one more time. You, you guys got to get this. Okay? You got to get this. It says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. The flesh is your emotions. The flesh that you sow to your flesh is when you sow to your lust, your desires, your emotions. Amen? And, and, and you know, your feelings and your emotions, how many of you have figured out that your feelings and your emotions always lead you wrong? Yeah. Right? Isn't it funny how that works? Yeah. You, you, you know, the, they, they sing songs and, and there's different things about, you know, feelings and emotions. But usually if you're following your feelings and your emotions, you're going to wind up in a place you don't want to be. You, you know, the, the worst time to ever make decisions is when you're angry. The worst times to make decisions are when you're emotional because you, you make decisions based out of fear, anxiety, and emotion. We need to make, make decisions based out of truth, based out of truth of what the word says, you know, right? Oh, we're awful quiet this morning. Or we're contemplating, right? Thinking, right? If we, if we, if we receive and we sow into the flesh, it, what does it say? We're going to reap Corruption. Do you know that, that, that anything that has to do with the flesh is corrupted? Right. It's really that simple. If it has to do with the flesh, it's corrupted. Because if it has to do with the flesh, it has you in it. It has you as the motivation, you as the recipient, you as the reward. So it, it, it's corrupted at some level, right? Now, here's when it starts to get better. Now, are you ready for it to get better? It says, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life <laughs> amen you, you know when 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 i was young and and they would teach that you know we, when we go to heaven we're going to live forever yeah. right everybody say yes, yes. <laughs> i'm like holy mackerel amen <laughs> When in Bible and in Sunday school, they teach, hey, when you die, you're going to go to heaven. And when we go to heaven, we're going to live for eternity. Right. Amen. You know, what was a revelation to me was I'm already living an eternal life. Right. Think about it. When as soon as I got saved, as soon as I got saved, my eternal life started. Right. You know, it's like the series. You guys remember the series? There can only be one with McLeod. Come on now. The Highlander. With OK, now you guys Google all that. Go home and watch an episode. OK. <laughs> They're immortals. The Highlanders, the, the immortals, you know, and, and whatnot. Well, it, well, that don't work. Nobody ever knows this show. I mean, <clears throat> praise the Lord. There's not only one. Amen. But see, listen, eternal life was given to you the day that you got saved. So how about let's enjoy our eternal life starting today? Amen. You, you see, for, for so long, there's, there's a misconception of a teaching that life is only going to get good when this one's over and the one in heaven starts. Man, if, if that's your life that you're living now, I'm so sorry. I'm so Because my Bible says heaven, we can have heaven here on earth as it is in heaven so it can be here that means that as much fun as we're going to have in heaven we can have as much fun here so how about if today is part of the etern your eternal life how about let's enjoy today but see we have to start following what the word says the, the problem with most of us is, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like the typical man thing. You, you know, I don't know about you, but, but my, my wife likes to order things from Amazon. You know, we have this stack of boxes on the house because my wife was gone. I didn't bring them in. <laughs> and almost everything that comes from Amazon has to be what? Assembled. 
put the, you know, praise the Lord, Shaylee has finally gotten to where she's really good at doing that. <laughs> she is. And if I leave it lay long enough, Shaylee will do it. But the difference between me and Shaylee is Shaylee actually usually does it right. Because she reads the instructions. Amen. Right? And, and she'll go through step one. And she'll lay the parts out. Me, I open the box. I dump it all out all over the floor. I look at the picture. All right, let's build this thing. Right? And normally I get about three quarters of it built and realized that 18 steps ago, if I didn't put this piece in this place, it's not going in now. Right. So I'm like, honey, this part no longer comes with this piece no more, okay? <laughs> the drawers, they don't open and close, okay? But they'll look nice. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the problem we have today in life. This is our instruction book, the Bible. <laughs> Most of you just dump it out onto the floor. You look at a, one or two pictures, and then you start moving forward. And then when we're having challenges and problems that we can't fix because we didn't fix it, wait, you understand what I'm saying? If you'll read the Word and you'll get the instructions at the start, your completed, finished product will be what it is supposed to be. You see, some of us are really good at, at making it look good on the outside but the drawers aren't working. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Come on now. You're stuck shut. <laughs> we got to get the instructions out, the Bible. And then not only do you got to get them out, listen, you got to read them. And then now, now listen to me, because some of us are good at this one too. I have read instructions for things and looked right at it and go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> they built it, right? They put it together. I read it and go, no, that's not how that works. No. I know how to build things yeah. because I am Ken the Builder. then you realize, I do not know how to build things <laughs> when I don't follow the instructions. There's a path that you need to take and be on. And in being on the right path, get you to the right destination. Amen. 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 Now, listen, it says in his word, he says, for he who sows to the flesh will of this flesh reap corruption. But he who sows of the spirit will reap everlasting life. Now, verse nine, you need to underline this verse in your Bible and let us who's us. It's us. Let us not grow weary. What does it mean to not grow weary? Don't get tired. Don't give up. Right. Not grow weary while doing Good. Double underline good. Because some of us don't grow weary while doing, but we forget the good part. We're just doing while doing good. Because listen, for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. For in due season. What does due season mean? It means when the time is right. When the time is right. The problem with most of us is we don't mind doing nice things for somebody for a short amount of time. We don't mind being the right person in a relationship for a short amount of time. We don't mind going the extra mile for a short amount of time. We don't mind being, you know, somebody who we think we should be, but we're really not. We're just doing the old fake it till you make it kind of a thing because we can do that for a time. But the problem with most of us is there's a time when the time runs out. When, when, when we say, you know what, I've had enough. Well, really, let, let me ask you, where does it say that? Where, where it says, let us not grow weary in well-doing. 
uh, up until the point that I'm really ticked off, tired, hungry. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, except when they're really not appreciative of what I'm doing, when they don't deserve it, when they, they talk even, doggone it, every good thing, I, no, it doesn't say that. Is, are you guys reading that anywhere in yours? Maybe the Message Bible has it in it. I don't know. I don't think so. I read the Message Bible, too. It's not in there. It's not in there. It says, let us not grow weary in doing good. How often are we supposed to do good? Every day, all day. Who are we supposed to do good to? Anybody and everybody. And then we're not supposed to grow weary doing it. Are you kidding me? Obviously. When they wrote that, they didn't know some of the friends that we have, huh? Obviously, when under the, the influence and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and Paul wrote that, he had never met. And you fill in the blank. Because we all have that one person, right? Come on now. That one person just, you know, the one that makes the little hairs on the back of your neck stand right up. Some of us are blessed with a plethora of them, amen? Amen. We have a few, praise the Lord. But it says, do not grow weary in doing good. Is that what your Bible says? Yeah. Come on, be, be honest. Is that what your Bible says? Yeah. Now, let me ask you, did it qualify it? Did it give you an exception? You, you know, it's not like the law, you know, except Article B, Section Subheading 12.6. There are no exceptions, right? There's nowhere where it says it's okay to act like that as long as you feel good. It doesn't say that, right? It doesn't say uh, do good as long as they reciprocate back good. I didn't read that. Did you? All right, so let me ask you. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How you measuring up? Praise the Lord. So I live alone. I don't talk to nobody. I'm doing great. <laughs> I do good to myself every day. Amen. But see, sooner or later, somebody is going to be in your life that's going to challenge everything you believe in. Everything that you hold true, everything that you hold dear is going to come to the test if it hasn't already at some point. So my question is, how much of the word, how much of the word do you have inside to draw from to get you past what you're going through? Amen. Amen. But see, the well has to be deep when the struggles are big. The well has to be deep when the storm's raging. And the problem with most of us is we have a shallow well. We have a shallow well, and we can draw deep when things are really well, when things are okay, but when things get sideways, mm, don't grow weary in well-doing. The Bible says, for in due season, for in due season, you'll reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. Don't get discouraged. Do your best. To stay positive and focused. It says in verse 10, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to two people. <laughs> Just try to get two in every day. Amen. Let us do good to all, to all, and especially those who are the household of faith. Amen. The Bible says, let us do good to how many people? You, you, you know, all means all. That means, that means, whoo, that means the person when you came into church Sunday morning and they were sitting in your chair. 
the nerve. That means when, 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 when you, you understand what I'm saying? When you take your, your favorite dish and your husband won't eat it because it's got peas in it. Gross. <laughs> Nasty. got to get the concept it's not about you it's not about you it's about him it's about him and if you'll make everything about you about him he'll make everything else work because you will keep it in the perspective that it belongs you see if you want to stay at peace so peace so peace be the peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Be the peacemaker. So peace. Do not grow weary in doing good. You know, we all get tired of being the nice guy. We do. It's natural. But when you find yourself at that point, it's time to regroup. It's time to regroup. It's time. Maybe you need to take a minute. Amen. Take a minute. Establish this relationship back and then get back to doing good. Get back to being the person that the Holy Spirit just dwells inside Amen. to the point that people just can't help but be attracted to you. They just want to be around you because in being around you, they feel the presence of the Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. That's why. Do not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, due season, his season, not yours, his season, God blesses more than you'll ever realize and understand. Amen? Amen. This is your best life now. No matter what you're going through, no matter what it is, God is able listen nothing is impossible with my god nothing is impossible not relationships not finances not health issues amen nothing is impossible but listen you got to get your instruction book out and you got to read the instructions and not skim them amen give the lord a big hand